Hey, hello everybody. My name is Mary Shores and I have decided to do my very first Facebook Live right here inside the group because I want to answer any questions that you might have regarding Dream with a Deadline or Ignite Your Dreams. So tomorrow I'm actually doing another Facebook Live in another group, so I thought why not just practice in here, get it going. Also, uh, I just start talking off a little bit about my day because it's Friday night and I'm actually just a bit tired, but I can tell you that my day started very early, had to get up at 5.30, had a school meeting with my son at his high school at 7.45, then it was on to be on a live podcast. Now this podcast was video and I usually really shy away from video. I, I love being on the radio. I love being on podcasts. But when it comes to when it comes to being on video, I freak out a little bit. Hi Diane. Hope you're well. So I've just this is the first time I've done this so I'm not sure how to um, I'm not sure how to see comments. But if someone would write a comment where I could maybe see it then that would be helpful. So what I'm going to do today is go through the book Dream with a Deadline and um, if uh, anyone hi Diane okay I can see that thank you very much that's so helpful because now I know how to see that and thank you for the hearts um, the other book I have is called Ignite Your Dreams and it looks like this so if anyone who joins wants to ask questions about this book that's fine I'm happy to go over that one but I was gonna go over dream with the deadline. So the first thing that we have when we open up the book is the life wheel. And the life wheel looks like this. And the point of the life wheel is that we're going to review each area of our life. So we're going to review, we're going to give ourselves a score from, I suppose you could give yourself a zero, but from zero to 10. And you're going to shade in the areas according to how you score yourself. So when it, um, when it is blank, it looks like this. And then when we color it in, it will. I, there's plenty of pictures in the group from everyone who has posted their pictures, and I'm very excited about that. And uh, since, Diane, it looks like it's just you and I, I'll go ahead and give you... Um, an Omega update we definitely got in which you know and I know you did too I'm super excited about it also um, I am starting on my second book so by the time I get to Omega I may actually already have the proposal finished at least that's my goal is to have the proposal finished by April the 1st so the areas that you're gonna the areas that you're going to focus on for your life wheel are health, personal growth, spirituality, self-care, relationships, friends and family, finances, and career. So just go ahead and give yourself a score in each one of those areas. And then from there, you're going to answer the reflection questions. On day one of the five day challenge, it's actually one of the easiest exercises because you really have to find what you're focused on in life. You know, step one of learning how to manifest is learning how to control your focus. So what I mean by that is that so many times we're focused on everything that we don't want. And what I'm here to tell you is that it's important to focus on what you do want in life. So the three-step process that I had created called Words That Work was knock off the negative self-talk, always replace them with words that work, and always say and do and focus on what you can do and not what you can't do. So what we do is we just go through here and we make a list of the things that we no longer want in life. And my list was pretty simple. Um, I did not want stress at home with the kids. And I did not want to feel overwhelmed at work. I am not interested in unhealthy relationships. Or I'm also not interested in having tax issues. So I did have a significant tax issue last year. It set me back by quite a bit of money. And I'm still digging out of that. So a lot of times when I teach workshops, I ask people what they want. And they simply just don't know. So 
in order to teach them how to figure out what they want, what we do is we say, what is the opposite of the thing that you don't want? So if what you don't want is stress at home, what would the opposite of that look like? And what I wrote down as my answer is happy, flowing family life with chores and homework done every night. So <laughs> that, is what, um, that is what I want. And then what is the opposite of being overwhelmed at work? And the opposite is having a structure at work, defining procedures and organization, always moving projects forward. So that's what I do want. And then I don't want unhealthy relationships, so it's important to say what is the opposite of that. It is the ability to discern red flags, to have deeper connections and um, be, being in relationships with people where we can more mutually support each other. <laughs> Still working your way back into the workbook. Absolutely love it, but got off track. Where did you end off at, Diane? So the opposite of tax issues is having my taxes done correctly and paid on time. And so it looks like for this year, this is the the best year that I've had as far as taxes. I mean, I still have to pay a lot of money and that's fine. But uh, the reality is that it's the first year that I was really able to get some things done on time, make some quarterly payments. The uh, what some people find is the toughest day of the of the workbook okay well that okay so then you're on you're on day two which is unraveling your belief system and that's what i am about to talk about now um day two can be one of the toughest days of the challenge because we're going to unravel our belief systems. Part of the reasons that we don't we don't make the goals that we set for ourselves is because we maybe we don't believe that we can. In fact, um, Diane, you know me well enough that you know that I am a furious note taker, and what I I have been taking notes the last few days on something, which is. Whenever, so often we set goals for ourselves and we don't reach them. And it could be that deep down inside, we, we don't really feel like we can meet that goal. Um, we want to make massive progress, but instead we might do anything. So I want to th think about what are the reasons why we might not make the goals that we set for ourselves. What is holding us back? So first, we could be afraid of failure. Um, we could be afraid that we will embarrass ourselves in front of front of in front of other people. We don't want to fail in front of other people. Also, we could have perceived limitations to say like, "Who am I to do this?" So, who am I to write this book? Who am I to get published? Um, you know, who am I to do whatever it is that that you want to do? Um, I also think that. We don't reach our goals because we simply don't know how, you know, so if you're given a project to do or, or you have something to do that you just, you just don't know how to do it. So we have to actually learn how to do it. Um, so when I first started writing, I didn't know how to write. And it's so funny because Diane, I mean, you remember when I introduced myself at the writer's workshop and I said, well, I don't know. I don't even read books. I don't know how I'm going to write one. So, um, and here I am. I mean, I did it. I learned how to do it. So another reason I think that we don't meet these goals is because we fail to take the time that is necessary to make them happen. Roxy, I'm glad you're joining me, but um, I seriously don't know why you would want to after having to hang out with me all day at work. So what we have to do is we have to flip the script on these beliefs so we have to in our minds we have to create a mindset that makes us able to reach our goals so on day two of the challenge we're going to be working on unraveling our belief system and this is a tough one exercise because it does force you to dig deep I want to ask you the question what is one thing that you want to be true in your life that is not true right now and actually it's been a couple months since I did my thing oh okay 
So I, I'm going to pick one something to um, go over right now. So um, something that is that I want to be true in my life that um, isn't true right now. Okay. So we can go ahead and um, be thinking of one. So whatever yours is, jot it down on a piece of paper. If you don't have your workbook handy, it doesn't matter. You can use any piece of paper. So I'm going to say that the thing that I want to be true in my life that isn't true right now is that I would like to have my um, social media following to be quite a bit bigger. So I need to put um, that I have a social media platform so I'm just writing that down so whatever yours is you know what is ask yourself what is something that I want to be true right now that isn't the example that we have in the book was um, from one of my staff members Megan and she wanted to have a closer relationship with her father so that was her example and I'm doing that I want to have a social media platform so the next step in this process is that we have to ask ourselves what are three reasons why that isn't true. So for my social media platform, um, one of the reasons it isn't true right now is because I did, I did make some mistakes early on and I did some things in the wrong order. So for example, um, I purchased and I started building a website before I, before I understood what branding and marketing was. So one of the reasons why it isn't true is because of the mistakes that I have made. Um, a secondary reason is that I had hired a person to get this job done who wasn't capable of doing the job. So I'm going to put down a hiring mistake. And then my third reason that it isn't true is I'm going to say that there's a part of me that just thinks that um, I'm not capable of it. Or I, I just really don't know how to do it at this point. So I don't know how. Okay, so then the next thing that I have to do is go to my number one thing, which is the mistakes that I've made. And I have to ask myself, what are three reasons why these mistakes are an obstacle? So on number one, it's the mistakes. So I'm going to give myself reason number one for that is that um, I spent a lot of money in the wrong direction. So I'm just writing that down. Number two is that if, number two is that I wasted a lot of time. So I would be a lot farther than I am now if I had not wasted the time that I did. And number three is that um, now I am lacking the confidence to be able to move my projects forward because I'm terrified that I'm going to continue to make these mistakes. So I'm going to write down a lack of confidence. All right, then I'm going to go and I'm going to take my number two reason and I am going to ask myself the same question. Uh, my number two reason is that I've made some hiring mistakes, so I need to say why is that an obstacle? So the first thing that comes to mind is that I am um, stuck with some of the things that this previous person did. So stuck with previous work. Um, also, that it wasted a lot of time, wasted a lot of time and money, and um, I think also because I hired the wrong person, again, it has affected my level of confidence in trying and wanting to get this, get this accomplished. So I'm going to say lack of confidence. 
Okay, and my number three reason was I don't know how. So why is that an obstacle? Well, because if I don't know how, I continue to make mistakes. So if I continue to make the same mistakes over and over again because I, hey, Anna, how are you? I, if I'm continuing to, Anna, we are working on day two of the Dream with the Deadline workbook. So I'm just going over that. You don't have to have the workbook. If you want to join us, you can grab a piece of paper and just answer the questions that I am asking. So my number three reason why that was not true is because I feel like I don't know how to accomplish that goal. So what I need to do is say, why is that an obstacle? Well, it's an obstacle because um, I don't have the confidence that I need. And that um, since I don't know how to do that, I am um, making mistakes. All right, so making mistakes. And then the third reason that not knowing how to do something is an obstacle is that um, sometimes I just don't want to do anything. Like if I don't know how to do it, I just literally don't know. I just don't want to do anything. So I feel stuck. Okay, so now I have a list of nine reasons. And what I'm going to do is I'm looking for what are the common beliefs. So the thing that I wanted to be true is to build a social media platform. And my three reasons why it isn't true right now today is that um, I've made a lot of mistakes, that um, I made, I hired the wrong person, and I don't know how. And then I had to ask myself for the first one, what are three reasons why that first one is an obstacle? It's because I spent a lot of money in the wrong way. I wasted a lot of time and um, it made my confidence go very low. So <laughs> I'm usually a pretty high confident person. So it's very rare moments where I have low confidence and this is definitely one of them. It's, it's been actually a little bit rough. So my number two thing was that I um, made hiring mistakes. So what are, the, what are my three obstacles with those hiring mistakes? It is that I am stuck with previous work that was done. That um, again, I wasted. Did you did your thing that you wanted to be true come from Find Your Focus page? No, Diane, it's on page eleven. It's on page eleven, so that is day two, and it looks like this. And it also. Oh, I thought I had the, the wonderful Megan's picture in it, but um, it doesn't. So it just it just looks like day two, page 11. Okay, so it, this actually also caused my confidence to just completely, completely plummet. Um, my number three obstacle, my three reasons for that are that I don't have the confidence. This was on I don't know how. I don't have the confidence. Um, I feel like I'm making a lot of mistakes, and I feel stuck. You have that, but it doesn't follow from the previous work. Hmm. You have page 11 or you have day two. So I'm going to say, what are the three common beliefs? And again, if you don't have the right page, you can just grab any piece of paper and do this as a journal exercise. So that works too. As a matter of fact, when I created all these exercises, um, I just did it in my journal because I love to journal. So I think that my three common beliefs here are um, obviously lack of confidence because I mentioned that in all three areas. And I think that feeling stuck is a common belief. And I also think that I have a common belief that I've wasted too much time. So can you see how that would block me? If I feel like I've already wasted time and I feel stuck and I don't do things moving forward, then I'm just going to continue to be stuck and continue to be, continue to procrastinate and continue to feel like I'm going to make mistakes. Well, just this week I said, you know what? Enough is enough. I am done with that. I am going to begin to make 
good decisions. And I basically took these beliefs and I had to understand, okay, even though I have made mistakes, I can stop making the mistakes right now and I can make a shift that will make the correct things happen for me in the future. And then, um, so right in the middle of the book, we have three steps for creating rocking affirmations. The reason I put this right after the belief section is because I am such a big believer in affirmations. I've been rereading Think and Grow Rich, and I don't know if you've read that book, but um, it was written in 1937 by Napoleon Hill. And in that book, they talk about something called auto-suggestion. And what's really cool about auto-suggestion is that I'm actually going to create a workbook just based on all of the steps in that, in that book. So the, um, the six steps in Think and Grow Rich is that number one, you have to have a desire. So you have to create a desire in your mind of exactly what you want. And it says, don't be general, be very, very specific. So if what you want is to write a book, if what you want is to make a million dollars, if what you want is a different job, a different home, to move to a different area of the country. Is there my old fashioned um, McDonald's glasses? I've had some of these. Since I was a kid, I think my mom used to get them at McDonald's. So the step two is determine exactly what you intend to give for that desire. So, so many times we have something that we want in life, but we don't take the time to say, what is it that I am willing to give in order to have this thing that I want? Or what is it that I am willing to sacrifice to have this thing that I want? So I think that that's really important. Then we want to um, establish a date. I think that's also really important to be able to establish a date. And actually, I'm getting um, out of breath from talking. Like I said, this is my first Facebook Live. So since like Diane, you're here, I'm actually gonna turn the camera around because you, okay, well, first of all, this is my room, but uh, Diane, check these out. This is my vision board. So I love this vision board because um, as you can see, the little yoga girl in the middle, <laughs> thank you, Diane. I'm doing a Facebook Live tomorrow in so this one's just for practice. So as you can see, the little yoga girl in the middle, she looks just like me, but um, I make these vision boards all the time. So this one is all about having confidence and thriving and keeping things moving forward. And the lady on the bottom, if I can get closer here, the lady on the bottom, she's actually writing and that giant sunflower coming out is her, I guess, creating. My room's a little messy, so. Here is my first vision board that I ever created. And um, I love it on the top. It says, women on top. And it also says, I'm going to make it big and be a visionary. So over here, we have yet another vision board. I need to move my lamp out of the way. This one, I'm going out of focus. Not sure why. Okay, there we go. This one I made um, when I turned 40. So it is all about my mind, body, soul experience. I'm now 43, so that tells you how um, old that one is. What a person told me to make a shrine for the book. So right here we have, yeah, you should do a new vision board. They're awesome. I should actually do, a, I've been thinking about doing a workbook on doing a vision board. This here is um, some layouts for my new website. And Diane, I got this jingly thing at Omega. So that was obviously, I have lots of stuff from Omega actually in my room. So you might recognize this thing. It says relax. That's from Omega. 
and okay. So I'm all done with the little tour here. Well, hold on, I have one more. I have another vision board I can show you. This one's in my bathroom. So this vision board here is, um, this one's more about balance and and of that breakthrough that I have at the top, I got that from uh, my Tony Robbins Date with Destiny, but uh, this one was all about creating balance in my life. So I actually have another vision board, but it's at my office, and I think that's enough vision boarding for the time. So I will turn the camera back. Okay, so you guys just got um, a little tour of my bedroom and my vision boards. So vision boards is one of my hobbies, obviously, because I don't know anyone else who has like four vision boards just in their bedroom. Yeah, the frame is... Um, the frame is super easy to do. I buy the extra large poster boards and I buy the colored ones because I like having the back, the black background. And then I just go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and buy a frame for, I don't know, $19.99 or $29.99 and then I bolt them on the wall and I can have them preserved that way. So, hey Megan. You just missed the uh, tour of my <laughs> tour of my bedroom where I was showing off all of my vision boards, and these here are my aura, some of my aura drawings that I get when I when I go get aura drawings done. Megan, are you feeling better? So I dropped my workbook along all of my frenzy but I will um, get right back in it so okay I'm so glad <laughs> I'm so glad that you're feeling better okay so talking about affirmations um, that's good I'm glad you're getting ready for bed you've had a long journey I decided a long time ago that I am basically, if Tony Robbins and Louise Hay had a baby, I would be that baby. So the reason that this is important is because I am the affirmation queen. Anything you give me, I can write an affirmation for it. And what I have done was included in this workbook a blog that I had wrote a while back called um, How to Create Three Steps for Creating Rocking Affirmations. Step one is that we're going to start saying what you never want to have in your life again. And we're going to say it with emotional conviction, with certainty. We're going to keep it simple and accessible so that we don't freeze in the face of resistance. So, for example, um, mine, and I included this in the book, is I release my fear of abandonment. When I was very young, I think about three years old, my mom and my father got divorced and I was sent to live with relatives and that I have definitely developed a fear of abandonment so um, my affirmation is I release my fear of abandonment um, another one could be you know I release my fear of poverty or I release my fear of sickness. So whatever you just need to release, you wanna say it with powerful conviction. And then you want to start saying, I am statements. So I am are the most powerful words that you can say. And you wanna say things like, I am happy, I am content, I am receiving unconditional love. Some of my favorite affirmations are actually, um, these are the ones that I say every morning, which are, of course, my mind will go blank when I'm trying to actually figure them out, but it is um, bring me ideas. Yeah, that's my first one. So um, I am an idea machine. I am 
constantly coming up with it, with ideas. And it was probably about seven years ago that I started saying this affirmation. Every morning I just say, bring me ideas. And lo and behold, after a while of saying that, I think it took about 30 days, then I just started having these ideas come to me constantly. So universe, bring me ideas. Guide me to thoughts that are in harmony with my core desires. So this is another one that I love to say. It's just an affirmation. Guide me to thoughts in harmony with my core desires. Sometimes I say, um, help me rendezvous with like-minded people. I really love to surround myself with like-minded people because it, um, actually I was just watching a show the other day about neuroscience and this neuroscientist said that um, when you're around people who you admire or people that you wanna be like, your brain actually synchronizes with them. So be careful because if you're watching this Facebook Live, you might actually be synchronizing your brain to mine and that could get scary. But don't worry, Megan, because I'm actually a very good sleeper and I get my eight hours in every night. It's part of my non-negotiables. So, um, when you're, um, oh, another affirmation that I use is, show me how this all works in comfortable, humorous, delicious ways. So I'm always having these um, big, things going on, big, just big, huge things and projects and, <laughs> and um, it's just amazing how fun, can, how life, how fun life can be. Uh, book four of Conversations with God just came out on March 27th and I have been reading that book and getting through it as quickly as I can because I love Neil Donald Walsh and I love the Conversations with God series. And um, they asked the question in the book, what is the spiritual reason for work? What is the spiritual reason for having a job? And I love the answer because the answer was that when you have a job, you learn how to help and serve other people. And um, I, I love that. And I think on that note, I am going to close up. Thank you very much for letting me get this practice in. My battery is showing up on 5%. So, um... I will say goodbye for now, and uh, Megan, get some sleep. I will see you on Monday. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Mary. Thanks so much for watching. Check out a free chapter of my book, Conscious Communications, at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter. The link is in the description below.